Hello, happy Friday. Thank you for joining me tonight. My name is Alyssa Thomas from Penguin and Fish, where we make lovely and quirky hand embroidery patterns and kits. And I'm here every weeknight at 8.30 p.m. Central Time, where we relax and we craft, we chit chat, and we work on a project together for about an hour here in the evening. Uh, thanks to replay viewers for watching and thank you YouTube viewers for watching as well. This will go up on YouTube at Penguin and Fish Movies when we're done here tonight. Uh, thanks so much again for joining me and I appreciate all the your thumbs ups and hearts and shares uh, that that's uh, it's awesome and I appreciate it a ton. Uh, so tonight you guys we are having our first Finish It Friday. So what that means is once a month, uh, usually the first Friday of every month, although I forgot <laughs> last Friday, so we're gonna pretend this is the first Friday of the month, but the first Friday of each month, we are gonna stop whatever we're working on, we're gonna take a break of, on what we're working on, and. Uh, pull out one of our unfinished projects and work on that. So that is the plan, an hour of working on something that's sitting around, not finished yet. So, all right, tonight, guys, I am going to work on my hedgehog uh, wall hanging. It's gonna hopefully go behind here at some point when it's done. So I wanted to show you where I'm at with it. I wanna, I wanna quilt the border tonight. I probably won't finish, but uh, it's some straight line quilting. So here we are. So I embroidered the hedgehog in there. And uh, I just, um, so there's a little hedgy. I have hand tied all the inside area. So I can show you guys that up close. See, so I have all that hand tied, which means you can see all those little, little ties. Uh, so he's embroidered and then all all hand tied and then the uh, border is out of jeans leftover jeans from my jean quilt and I have started I've started to do the border here you can kind of see better on the back what I have done so here you can see all the little ties the backs of the ties and then you can see the start of my my uh, straight line sewing the border. I'm just going around and around uh, until, I'm, until I'm done. So that's what I'm gonna work on tonight. Just more of the, I, I drew a diagonal line here, so I'm gonna start on the diagonal and then sew along in the ditch of these lines. And we're just gonna go around around in a circle. So that's, that's the plan. It, it, I did it a little bit last weekend and man, it's taken a lot longer than I thought just to sew straight lines. So we'll see how it goes. Uh, I know I mentioned before, oh, I'm Gretchen, I'm doing this on, on the machine with my, my walking foot. So we'll take a look at that. And there was one thing we talked about, uh, I was talking about this project a little bit, but uh, the, the jeans are pretty stretchy. So they were kind of bunching. And I think it was Lucy, she suggested uh, I have this little dial on the top of my sewing machine that I have never ever touched before. I never even knew it did anything, but she mentioned that I can unscrew that a little bit and that should relieve some of the pressure so it's not my, my foot, the presser foot isn't pushing down on my fabric so much and that might help with this thick jean and stretchy jeans uh, for it to go through the machine a little bit better. So we might spin that dial a little bit and see what happens. Uh, but I'll, I'll show you what I mean. We'll start and I'll show you kind of what I've been dealing with with the border and then we'll maybe start putzing around. But if, if, if uh, we can't figure anything out, then I've just been using my stiletto and just kind of pushing the fabric through and it's working okay. It's fine, uh, you know. I only have a few more of these lines to go and I think we'll be, we'll be good. So, all right, I'm gonna flip you around and we'll get going. I gotta remember what, what corner I'm starting on here, but we'll, that's the plan for tonight, guys. So let me know if you guys are working on any of your unfinished projects tonight. I'd love to hear uh, how all that's going and I'm gonna flip you around. Okay. And thanks again for joining me. All right, so here is my walking foot. I'm going to just really show you guys it. Actually, you know what? I'm going to take, take you off the stand for a second so I can show you. 
because walking feet are pretty intense. So this is the walking foot. It has this whole, whole deal back here as well. And it also has an arm. Oh, I don't know if you can see, but it also has like a little metal arm. See, I'm kind of shaking it right here. That goes around this uh, little screw right here. And that, that uh, moves up and down as we go. And I think that movement up and down uh, makes like little feet on here help pull the fabric along. So what a, what a walking foot is, is you have the bottom feed dogs and then you have additional feed dogs on the foot. So it helps pull both the top and the bottom through. Ooh, you're sewing a binding on a friend's quilt, sandwiching the I Love Home. Oh, Gretchen, that's awesome. That's, that's farther than I am on, on that project for sure. The I Love Home quilt. Um, Okay, it adjusts the presser foot. I've never had a machine that you could do that with. Oh yeah, so this is this is what I'm talking about right here. Got a dial right here that uh, in theory adjusts the presser foot up and down a little bit. So it spins presumably. <laughs> I'm a little nervous about doing it. I think I might get some tape out just so I can uh, put a dab of tape just where I where I start so I can I know how to get back to where I came from, right? So on that straight part, that's... So where the tape is straight, that's where it has to line up with this guy here. That's that's my plan. Ooh, finish knitting a dishcloth. Those are always fun. That's one of my favorite things to do. Oh, do I up and down? Oh, do I pull it up and down? Eh. Oh, look. Oh, look. Ha-ha. All right, I just did something. I can press it. Oh, wow, check that out. Dang, stuff's happening here. Oh, look, okay, so check this out. <laughs> All right, so I've never seen this before. Look, we got numbers. One, two, three, four. So it's not a twist thing. It's a push up and down thing. Um, so I have no idea where we started. I'm guessing right there because I couldn't see any of the numbers. How do we do that now? Push it all the way down and... Okay, I just pushed push the sides down and then it popped up. I'm just trying to see if I can notice a change underneath. No, so I can't really see. I can't see anything happening down at the bottom, so we're, we're just gonna have to try. So we're gonna start, we're gonna start where it was. <laughs> All right, this is my new favorite thing. All right, but I'm gonna start where it was um, just so I can show you what was going on and then I'll pop it all the way up and we'll, we'll see what happens. But that was nifty. <laughs> start with it all the way up. I'm going to start with it here just cause this is where it's been Gretchen. And then, then I'll show you kind of what I'm dealing with just so we can see. And then I will pop it all the way, all the way up. So, all right, here's, here's the presser foot there. I think I can, I think you guys can see it, right? So I'm gonna make sure you guys can see where I'm sewing. So, all right, I need to find where I started, and I think we're over here. Ooh, squaring up your elephant abstractions quilt. Yay, everyone's doing something. Everyone's making something. All right, this is where I started. I, I jumped from this row to this row. Um, I kind of have a white line drawn on here but it's, it's sort of hard to see. Uh, it's just chalk, so it's kind of coming off. I'm gonna kinda, I can barely see it. I'm gonna draw on it again. So I just drew a diagonal along this corner because I'm starting, I'm gonna start like right here. I'm gonna just eyeball, you know, where, where this guy connects to there and this guy goes straight up. So we're gonna start about right there. And I don't, I don't need to be perfect on this thing either. So we're going to lift this up. Ooh, dealing with bulk already. I think I'm stuck on something actually. There we go. Okay. Let's start about there, I would say. I mean, you can already see how stretchy, stretchy this is. All right. Let's do it. So I am just sewing a straight line. Um, I'm going to start this a little different than what I've always done in the past. So normally I would do uh, a, a, um, a back tacking to start this. 
Uh, so I, but I read a book on quilting. It was an older book on quilting and she recommended doing just the tiniest of stitches instead of doing a back tack. So we're going to do that. I'll kind of show you what I mean. So teeny tiny stitches. We're almost in the same spot. All right. And then I'm going to go to my normal stitch length, which I have at like a 12th of an inch. Oh, and you know what? I'm also going to get my, um, my grippets out. So this is, I'm using these instead of those gloves that you put on. Um, they're kind of fun so far. I'm, I'm enjoying playing with them. All right. So then I'm just going to stitch in the ditch. And that's, that's the plan. And I'm dealing with, uh, so over here, Oh, the jean quilt. Uh, so I have all this over here. I am not done with my jean quilt yet, uh, but all these jeans from here are leftovers from, from the jean quilt. So you can already kind of see it's wanting to bunch up a little bit though. Oh, you have these grippets and you love them. I am so loving them as well. So these grippets, um, it's a small company that manu manufactures them, uh, Sewing Mates, and they're awesome. So they have all these grippers on the bottom and they're kind of nubbins on the top, which is great because um, your fingers can push against them and stuff. There's like a, you know, a physical, to it of, of being able to grab and it's not just slippery on the top uh, and they really grip the machine and then you can just move them all over you can actually use the curves for when you're free motion quilting you can use those curves as a guide to get curvy lines or straight lines so you can actually use this as a quilting ruler as well which is kind of cool um, I like them just because I don't like the idea of the gloves I gloves I have the tiniest hands and gloves I always have like this much finger at the end of every glove so I don't know I, I I'm just not sure about the gloves I I don't have any so I haven't really tested the gloves uh, my mom has some gloves though so maybe next time uh, I'm by her I'll give give the gloves a try but I like that I can just pick these up and move I suppose with the gloves you can't you you're it's maybe easier to move um Oh, double watching the the premiere. Yes, I I um, I'm skipping the skipping the Olympic uh, thing tonight. But I totally get if you're watching the Olympics. All right, so so far so good as far as uh, things getting bunched up or not. So, all right, uh, this is kind of a goofy thing with this quilt. So I, this is a, they're jeans. And on this side, I sewed uh, the seams on the outside just because I thought they, I thought it was kind of cool. Um, so I've just been sewing over them. I, I thought that maybe I could do them crisscrossy like this, but then I thought it was, that's just too much. So I'm just, I'm just sewing over these. But it, when you look close at it, you can see, oh, the seams are on the outside. The, you've never used the gloves yet. The grippers look better. I'm digging in the grippers for, for sure uh, so far. And the gloves didn't help you. That's good to know. Oh man, I just had, I just had a vision of maybe I was sewing over the outside of my quilt, but, but we're good still. All right, I stopped here because I want to get my, uh, stiletto out just to make sure I'm sewing over these bits. <laughs> Your priorities are straight. Watch till I come on. Nice. The other nice thing with these uh, grippets is I can kind of use them as a guide uh, because, you know, right now I don't have my, my seam. I'm not, I'm not stitching in the ditch anymore over this section, but I can have, um, I can just set this as a guide. So right now it's in line with um, like the edge of this screw. So as long as I can stay within the edge of that screw, I should be sewing a straight line. Oop, whoops, there we go. And I should be um, in the right spot once I, 
get up to the uh, ditch again here. I make it look so easy. Well, I don't know. We're 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 just cruising along slowly. That's that's all. And it's not bunching up too bad, like how it was uh, over the weekend. So um, so far so good. I am dealing with the bulk. Like it, the bulk just wants to pull uh, me out from being being straight. Uh, the Grippets, oh, I should have put a link to it. I, I didn't think of it. But if you could do a search for Sewing Mates, I believe it's sewingmates.com. Uh, this is actually where I got my, my sewing table as well. Um, and the reason, uh, they were the only place I could find an adjustable sewing table. So um, maybe I can show you guys that quick too. But uh, my sewing table, or when we're done tonight, remind me, I will show you my sewing table. It is usually with a sewing table, an extension table, you have to get it custom made for your sewing machine, right? So it fits just the right height and just the right um, place where your sewing machine fits right into it, right? Um, I didn't want that because... Um, because for me, I, you know, this is an old machine. What if I get a new machine at some point? Um, then I won't, then I'll have to get a whole new extension table. So I didn't like that idea. So I started researching adjustable, uh, adjustable sewing tables. Yeah, and then it's super expensive too, exactly. Um, and I found these by Sewing Mates. So this, this, uh, this table right here, you can kind of see, it's completely adjustable in all sorts of different ways. So this brings, you know, this arm or this part in and out, and the, the legs are adjustable, so it's just the right height. So it's adjustable all, 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 all over the place. Your presser foot is pushing the top layer towards you. Yeah, so, um, all right, we'll make this turn. And then I will sew the next one with the, um, that little dial. This guy will pop this guy, uh, we'll pop it out like that. <laughs> it's going to be my new favorite thing. Um, but for now, let's just get to the end. It's actually not bunching as much as what I thought it was, but you're definitely right. It is, it is still bunching. It is still uh, pushing, pushing the top fabric forward. Um, you know what? I can't see my line again, so I'm going to just get my chalk pencil out, and I'm going to use my grip it as kind of a ruler here. So, all right. I need that diagonal line so I know where to, where to turn. So, oop, I broke my, broke the lead there. So I'm going to go straight until, I think we're about here. That's where I'm going to aim. And that will be where I where I turn. And at that point, we will I'll pop that guide up. We'll go all the way up and see what happens. I have never used it before, but yeah, see so you can see uh, this front fabric uh, pushing. Yeah, so I pin basted this all, so you can see like here's a pin. Um, this is all pin basted, and Donna, I've just been taking taking it out. Uh, taking the pins out as I approach them. Oh, you know what? I have not, <laughs> I have not contacted the sewing machine place about about the belt yet. Um, we cleaned this machine the other day and noticed that the belt was um, the belt was broken or just had had some tears in it. So um, I need to get that checked out. I have not emailed him yet. All right, I'm rotating. I have my needle down. So I'm pivoting on the needle there. There we go. So I'm just going to keep making these squares. So press a foot down. Um, let's try this. I'm going to, we're going to pop this guy all the way up. Uh, Jennifer, I am using a walking foot. <laughs> all right, we are set at, let's look at this again. I don't know if you guys can see. I'm going to zoom in. There we go. We got we got some numbers here. One, two, three, four. So I must have been all the way down on four. I'm guessing that's four, right? 
Um, so let's see, I'm gonna try, oh yeah, so I can just kind of push it down, three, four, maybe we're on like five. <laughs> I know, what my new favorite thing. So we're gonna go all the way to the tallest point and we're gonna see what happens. I've never, never knew that existed. It's this magic little thing that uh, just appeared, <laughs> appeared on my machine there, so that's fun. All right, just trying to get it so you guys can see a little bit better. So I still have room here. All right, so I, I physically can't really see anything happening. Oh yeah, okay, I can. Let me zoom in, I'll show you. Um, this time I could see, see something. So let's just angle down here. All right, so right now that peg is all the way up, I'm gonna push it down. Look, now I pushed it all the way down. You can see the presser foot went down just a little. So right now I'm gonna pop it back up. There. It definitely went up a little, didn't it? So pushing it down, yep, pushing it all the way up. So right now it's all the way up. Let's see if that, oops, sorry guys. Uh, let's see if that reduced the, um, the drag on this thing a little bit. Cool! I learned something new and awesome! Wow, it's really moving under there. So I think I might have it a little high because right now it almost feels like free motion quilting, like like I can move it everywhere. Let's let's just keep trying. Oh yeah, yeah, it's sliding everywhere. So let's let's go. Let's do it in the middle. So all right, I pushed it down to two. All right, there. Now it's not sliding so much. Like before, it was just as if it was up. I was I was able to move it all over the place. So I'm guessing that's too high. Um, so now I have it in the middle of all the way up and all the way down. So definitely I don't, I don't feel as much side to side movement. Um, lift up your needle and foot to release any tension. There's no tension. Man, I still feel like I can sl slide it side to side a little bit, but not, not as much. And you know what? I don't... I don't think it's bunching as much either. Ooh, a new trick. Okay, I do wanna check. Oh yeah, um, let me get a little farther and then I do wanna check the back just to kind of see if the bobbin is still doing all right by me clicking that thing. Oh, that top is definitely gliding underneath there better. Ooh, it's good, this is a good thing. All right. Um, I'm gonna sew to the other side of this, this square here and then we'll look at the back. Yeah, that's working, working better. So now I just have to remember to put that back, but that shouldn't be too hard. Oh, sweet. This is working so much better. All right, but let's take a look at this. I want to just check the back of this quick, see what's going on. All right, so um, all of this looks good. So this is where, yeah, this is where we went back to like in the middle. I'm not pushing at all. I'm still letting, I'm still letting the walking foot do the work, Patricia. All I'm really doing is kind of holding it straight with those grippets. But you can see, look, I got some squiggles. This is when we were all the way up. And um, that's when it was sliding. Like it was almost like I was free motion quilting because the it was too high. So that's why it was a little wavy there. Um, no puckers or anything. And then I put it down to the two instead of the four. And now it looks, now we're straight again. So I think we're we're good to go. Irene, I don't remember anything like that in that dial in the manual. I don't know. Maybe you got to read it again. Um, your back should be fine. You didn't change attention. Yep. Nope. It looks great. Do you have info? Yeah. I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to look it up, Irene. Uh, but that was. That's a fancy new thing on my machine. Okay. That is so helpful because there are times when, man, I'm just pushing fabric on the top and I can't get it to go. Um, so just. Yeah, alleviating that pressure here a little bit. 
yeah, so I'm not, I am still letting the foot guide me along. Um, the most I'm trying to do is, you know, it's bunching up over here. I'm just trying to keep it straight with these things more than anything. Put a sticky note to remind you what pressure the foot. Um, I think I'll, rem well, I think I'll remember there's not that many choices and I think I'm gonna just have to test it with each thing that I do. Actually, I might put it down one more. See what that does. There, I put it down one more level because it is still maybe sliding a little bit more than I want. No, no, see how it's bunching up again. So we're gonna pop this up and do that level, that level three again. But yeah, you can see coming up here, the effects of that pushing. So here we go. So when I did that first row, that first corner, it was really pushing it. And look at it compared to where it's basted. This is my basting and it was pushing it, pushing it, pushing it. Um, look how different it is than, than my pin there. So um, the pin's in the way anyway right now. So I'm gonna take that out. And um, I'm just gonna kind of, we're gonna have to kind of lay this flat and ease it a little bit. But now I'm hoping I can get to that point without so much bunching. The top button helps a lot with tension, thickness of what we're quilting. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna use this from now on, that's for sure. So I do, I can barely see my line here yet. I'm gonna aim for about right where my finger is there. So this is just, there's just a lot of jeans here. I'm gonna, oops, sorry. I'm gonna just help guide it a little bit. Just kind of ease it. There we go, I think we're good now. Um, about right there. All right, time to turn again. Turn around. Oh, this is going so much more smoothly than it was over the weekend. Uh, I was just dealing so much with that bunchy fabric. All right, press a foot down. All right, let's cruise along this next line. Stitching in the ditch. And uh, uh, if you haven't heard that term before, stitch in the ditch, that just means I'm sewing right in the seam. The seam's like a ditch. Oh, it's going so much more smoothly. All right, we're gonna take this pin out now. We're approaching that. It's a little bunchy there too. We're just gonna have to kind of ease through this border. This fabric that I was using, this is called Monk's Cloth and it is really stretchy and flowy too. So overall, this is not the most simple top as far as stretchiness. Yes, the corner is a little on the bias. It's all just a little, a little wonky. You know, it looks, looks easy, just some straight lines, but we are dealing with some little, little weird hiccups. This too, for example. So the, you can kind of see, oh, I don't know if you can tell, but I think we're on the bias here as well. So the bias just means, um, instead of going with the vertical and horizontal weave of the fabric, I'm going um, across an angle of the fabric, like a 45 degree angle, and that happens to be the stretchiest. So if you pull at a 45 degree angle, it's super stretchy there. So when I'm sewing over this 45 degree angle, it's gonna wanna stretch and, and move around and stuff. So, you know, we can deal with it. It's just one extra little thing. And it, if the tension was really tight against the, w with the presser foot, um, it would be stretching even more and which is exactly what was happening last time. Yeah, jeans are, jeans are a strange animal anyway. So uh, this was made, these jeans, I cut them from like oodles of my husband's old jeans. That's what all these jeans are. And it used to, I used to have, um, when I started cutting jeans for this, I used some of my old jeans too. But then I realized, oh, women's jeans 
have all that stretch material in it. And so these were all one and a half inch strips. So I made one big one and a half inch stretch strip, like, you know, cupcake. <laughs> um, and uh, I couldn't, I had to stop putting women's jeans. So I had to stop using my old jeans because they were just stretchy. They were, they were going all over the place. Um, so then I just stuck to my husband's jeans. I think I got one or two of my dad's jeans in there too. Although now I think men's jeans have some stretchy stuff in there too. Oh, this is just going so much more smoothly tonight. Okay, this is why I love working on uh, um, other little projects like this and, and here with you guys because this is gonna, this whole tension thing, I have a feeling this um, might save us later with the free motion quilting too, or just, it's something good, good to know for sure. All right, I'm just going to get my stiletto out here again, but mostly just to kind of mark where I'm aiming for. So, all right, about right there. You can kind of see my white line here. Um, I'm just eyeballing, you know, to here, to the line. All right, that's what I'm aiming for. Bunching up a little, but not too bad. Just tuck that underneath. All right, I think right there. We'll rotate again. Oh man, it, Gretchen, it feels awesome to be working on it. Um, working on a, um, a project, uh, you know, I love working on the projects we're working on, but you know, there's always those ones hanging out that aren't done yet. And, and it's awesome to be feeling like you're making progress on there. Oh, you use, do you, you free motion quilt with your walking foot? Oh, oh, you use the, oh, I, no, I got it, Lucy. You use that tension thing with the walking foot, but it doesn't matter with the free motion foot because there's no pressure on it. It's, it's raised. That makes sense. That's, that totally makes sense. But man, this is gonna, I, I've been doing a lot of walking foot type stuff just because, you know, I'm too scared to do the free motion quilting. So man, this would have helped me along the line. But this makes me excited about doing more stuff with the walking foot too. You made a queen size jean quilt. You made a fence rail and when I was finished, so it was so heavy. So Patricia, that is the size of the jean quilt that I'm working on, like where the excess of, um, this is the excess from that quilt. And ours is so heavy too, so I'm not done with it. It is a large queen, so it's probably closer to a king, but I wanted it to lay over the sides of the bed a lot. But yeah, it's heavy, but I kind of, I'm kind of excited about how heavy it is. I'm a little scared about how I'm gonna wash it ever. <laughs> uh, but we'll see. But yeah, it's, it's heavy, but I'm so excited about it. It's very similar to this. It's just the, the one and a half inch strip. So this is one inch right here. Uh, once it's sewn in it. So it's just strips like this, but it's in a log cabin style quilt. And I did the, um, you know, on, a, on jeans, sometimes uh, on one side it'll be dark and then the other side it'll be light. Oh, I can kind of show you. Um, so with, a, with the log cabin, I have the top and the, the right is dark and the uh, left and the bottom is light. So you got those triangles going like dark, light. And it's just the, the jeans flipped to the, to the wrong side. But I've attached all the strips of jeans. I've just sewn them together like this and then and opened the seam because I just thought this was a fun little weird detail. So my jean quilt has all these little, little nubbins all over the place too, like this does. Man, we are not even around this. Oh, this is a, we're on the last row. <laughs> not the last row, but we're on the last, you know, we've gone around once after this one. Yeah, so here's another really stretchy area. I'm gonna let the walking foot do its job a little bit more here. I'm just gonna kind of hold it here a little bit while it pulls itself through, letting the walking foot do it. 
your grandma would use jean quilts over us as kids and we couldn't move under them, Sharon. That's funny. That's cool. I like that. All right. Letting the walking foot do its job. Letting it pull me along. I do like that I can have my hands free by not having the gloves on by using these, these grippets instead here. And again, if you wanted to try them out, it, it's uh, Sewing Mates. So sewingmates.com, I think will get you there. I'm liking them so far. Not that I have much experience with alternatives, but uh, I like this. So I'm hoping to use these when we do the free motion, free motion quilting as well. All right, so I'm approaching um, right here. I'm going to get my stiletto out again. Approaching where we started. Actually, since I'm here, I'm going to snip off that thread that we started with. I'm going to snip it underneath too. There we go. Now I won't get those threads in the way. All right, get the stiletto out again. So I'm, I'm aiming for where we started right here. And again, it's, it's just the jeans are really bunchy. All right, and I'm going to, since we're gonna be stopping uh, this row right here, I'm gonna do that thing that I read again by making, instead of back tacking, I'm just making the stitch length really, really small until I get to that point. And supposedly that will hold the stitches enough. So I'm just, we're gonna just see. Oh, you have a massive jeans that you're saving for a quilt someday. Oh, so cool, Joe. I, I just, I love my jean quilt. Even though it's not done, I still like it. So, all right, we are done with this first round. I am going to, um, maybe we can get another one done tonight. So let's just mark my starting spot. You know what, let's use the grip it because I'm a little further away from it now. I'm just doing a straight line here. Um, I can still see the diagonal. So our next starting spot is right, right there. All right, so I'm going to just jump with the needle. So I'm gonna lift up. So the needle is not in the fabric anymore. And we're gonna rotate. Oh man, this is heavy, just this little, little guy. And my starting spot. Oop, get the thread under there again. Starting spot is, oh, way up here, okay. That's a little high. Okay, so right there. And again, I'm gonna, I'm gonna leave uh, it with the really small stitches for a few stitches. All right, and then I'll go back to my normal length and I'm using a 12th of an inch again. Just, I don't know if that's what I, I don't know if that's good or bad. It's just what I usually do. I gotta find my grippets. You did a jeans ray quilt and a jeans, and it's a jeans square on top of the flannel square. Oh, cute. So jeans on one side, flannel on the other. It's so heavy. Oh, it sounds awesome though, Robin. I just love the idea of, like using up stuff too, you know? Jeans were no good anymore. I mean, you can see how worn these jeans are, so maybe it's not the best idea to use it because, you know, maybe this area will wear uh, really quickly, but I don't care. We'll just repair it again. Repair it with some other reused fabric. Oh, let's see here, I love these little joins. Let's make sure we don't get it caught under the foot. All right, we're getting to this pin. So I'm, I'm unpinning my uh, pin basting as I go. So we have, there's these curved pins, if you haven't heard of uh, pin basting. So we're attempting to hold three layers of fabric together. I got my, my front of the quilt, I got the batting, and then I got the back of my quilt is this, is this red. 
And uh, uh, before we sew it together, like what we are doing now, we need, it, we need to hold those three layers together so they don't move all over the place. Um, and that's what these curved pins is, is one way to do it. Um, it's called pin basting. So uh, I've, I've pinned the three layers together all over the quilt. And I've just been, um, as I approach them, I've been just taking them out. First of all, then they're not in my way. And then I don't have to take them out later. So there we go. And now I'm ready to keep going. Oh man, I only have one more row after this because the last one's the binding. Um, so I only have two more rows. I probably still won't finish that tonight. We might, I might uh, not even finish this, but you know, it is Saturday tomorrow. So maybe I will, um, maybe I'll just leave this on the machine. And since I just have that one, one more row, maybe I'll, in the evening or something, maybe I'll finish that row. Man, then that's a whole nother step done. Then all I have left is the binding. I have to actually make a binding for this, but I think I am gonna use the same bright red. I think that'll be really cool. It's also the same color as the hedgehog's nose on, on this embroidery. So I think it'll kind of match and be kind of fun. A red border, um, little binding, not a border, but you know, it's technically a little one inch or quarter inch border or something, right? Oh, go for it. You want to see it hanging. Yeah, so that's the one other thing I have to do, too. I have to make a sleeve for it uh, so I can hang it up. I'm going to get my uh, stiletto here again. Here are all those funny seams that I want to make sure that I sew over. But yeah, I want it hanging up, too. And actually, I don't know if I have a stick or anything, a dowel to hang it up with. To figure out the hanging thing yet but I, I do want to hang it um I do want to need to make a sleeve and I actually don't do that very often um I'm gonna have to google how to how to do a sleeve again I always forget there's there's little tricks for that um you base the Sharon Schomburg way with way but you really want to try the fusible batting oh gosh I've never tried fusible batting before I have not tried the spray either. There's like a spray glue that you can use to baste your three layers together. All that stuff freaks me out a little bit. I don't, I don't know. I like that, um, I like that, I like the mechanicalness of just pinning it. You can also sew baste it. I mean, that's, that's like, you know, the most traditional way to do it is just stitch it with really large stitches over the whole thing. I actually did that for this section before I tied all the little guys because um, the pins, I needed more than just the pins because this is really stretchy, this, this cloth here. <clears throat> so uh, for that, I, uh, I stitched some stitches in there too. Oh, never again. It gums up and ruins the needles. Ooh, good to know, Gretchen. I just, I don't know. Spraying that stuff freaks me out. I don't know why. I'm sure it's perfectly fine, but... I'm sure it's fast and easy. Oh, you spray ba base yours, Joe? Tell me what you like about doing it that way. Because I've never, I've never done that before. All right, I'm going to extend this line. Oh, above, from above, I can see the line a little bit better. I'm going to just draw it again. I kind of want to aim for about right there, looks like. All right. Oh, you use it, but you spray it outside. See, that's the thing. <laughs> I wouldn't be able to spray it outside. Uh, right now because it, it is chilly. Oh, windows and doors open when you spray. Yeah, see, I don't know. If I got to do stuff like that, then uh, that scares me a little. All right, I'm trying to aim for this point. Wow. Okay, I got to tell you, this walking foot is working so much better after working with that tension little circle thing on the top. Wow, this, um, I'm just looking at this piece of uh, jeans here, and it is not square at all with the rest of it. But that's okay. We're gonna work with this. If it's wonky, I'm kind of I'm kind of okay with it. I kind of like the idea of this being super wonky when I'm done. But that's this is not straight. 
Staple gun thing. Oh, so I have seen that too. It's kind of like, gosh, I wouldn't, it's like a, not like a staple gun. It's like those things that you tag clothes with or like those little T things that tags on clothes are held, held down with. I've seen those before um, to, to base a quilt to, I don't know. I'm fine with the pins. All that seems like excessive. You get to sit at the table the way Sharon shows you. No more floor. See, Robin, that would be nice. I, I would, um, I'd look into that. Except for, um, I'm still at this tiny, tiny table. And the quilt would have to go on all, all uh, four sides. Man, even with this little quilt, I'm dealing with all the bulk over on the left here. You have one of those. Oh, you don't feel like it holds the layers tight enough. Oh, that's interesting, Sharon. Yeah, I could see that. Huh. Good to know. Oh, I think I'm actually stuck on something here. There we go. All right, we're approaching that pin, so I'm gonna to wanna to get rid of that. I always try and stop with my needle down. A lot of newer machines automatically do that, but um, I try and have it down, because if it's up, then if I'm moving and tugging at the quilt, the whole thing might slide. And uh, the pin, or the, not the pin, the needle being down kind of holds, holds it in its place there. All right, popping that guy out of there. All right. Wow, just does, does not want to move over here. That's why I need these guys, just to keep things straight. So the rest of the quilt wants to do its own thing. That's what I'm worried about when we get to the uh, quilting, my uh, Charming Chevron's quilt. It's just going to want to move all over on its own. You know, I'm wondering if I have enough. I have just barely... Uh, no, I don't have enough. I was wondering if I had enough uh, red that I could just... If, if I cut off this batting, I could do that type of um, binding where I just flip this over a few times. But I don't... It's not wide enough. I'm going to have to do a traditional binding. Haven't thought that far. Ooh, we are a little stuck here. I'm gonna just pull it a little bit. All right, let's unpin this guy. There we go. And uh, when I store these, I don't close them. I leave them open like this. I mean, it's kind of annoying when you dump them all out because they like to grab on to each other. But it's so nice not to have to undo every pin before you pin it. They're just all open already and I can just uh, pin it in right away. So I, I leave them open after I'm done here like this. And I have a little little jar that I put them in. Man, I'm feeling so much more comfortable with this now. I'm, I'm getting really excited to quilt, to start the free motion quilting. Like, I'm, I'm itching for it right now. All right, before we get too far here again, let's mark. Oh, we'll go a little further. There. Um, let's mark the next spot that I'm aiming for. About right there. And you know what, I'm going to get that stiletto. It's kind of the place to mark the spot. I think one more. There we go. Lap size, you do straight line quilting. So far, larger quilts. Oh, you have them done by the long armor. Oh, man, I, I, I want a long arm. I want to be the long armor. 
That'd be fun. I'd be scared to do other people's quilts, though. I think we talked about that already. I, I, I want it just to play. I want it to be just a fun toy to have. A long arm quilt. I'd be, but I'd be too scared to make it a business, I think. I'd, I'd be too scared to stitch other people's quilts. Unless it was one of the pre, not preset, but like one of those mechanical ones where you can load in designs to the, to the long arm quilt and then it will just do that design over the whole quilt. Um, maybe, maybe that would be the only service I offered <laughs> to other people just because I'd be too scared to, you know, freehand draw on, on someone else's quilt. I don't know, I'd still be afraid of ruining it somehow. <laughs> Yeah, this is cooking, cooking tonight, Patricia. I can't tell you how much easier uh, it is tonight than uh, what it was over the weekend, um, just because we raised that foot a little bit. So um, thanks again for the suggestion. I know a couple of you guys were um, mentioning that to me when we talked about it last time. And man, learned something new about the machine and... Uh, Got better at straight lining, line stitching all in all in one evening. That's that's a good evening. <laughs> yeah, we're cruising on this now. Walking foot is happy now. Getting over that little hump right there. All right, I'm gonna. Get rid of this pin while I'm here. There we go. And I think, yep, we have this row and then one more to go. And then we're done with this round. And I think we might uh, call it an evening after we get done with this round. I am surprised that we got two done tonight, honestly. You know, it's just straight lines and it's a small quilt. You'd think I would just be able to zip around, you know? But it still all takes time. Oh, a pantograph. I'm not talking about a pantograph. I've seen those on... Um, I've seen those on long arm quilts. That's cool. So it's like a whole design drawn out and you have like a laser or something pointing down at it and then you just follow that. I'm talking about, yeah, computerized where where the computer has all the, the pantograph or whatever figured out already and you just kind of babysit it as it stitches. That That's what I would offer other people. I would actually love to design those though, the computerized things. I could see, you know, doing a computerized one with like little animals and stuff in and little flowers and hearts. I would, I would like to design some of those. I actually have a program that I can do that in, but I've, you know, I don't have a long arm machine, so I haven't played around with it, but I think that would be a whole lot of fun. All right, I'm going to mark, mark this. I think about right there. Again, I'm just going to get my stiletto out here to help me drive. I'm just aiming, aiming for the stiletto. I think that's probably good. And get rid of that pin right away. Okay. And rotate. We are cruising. Okay, I'm having a great time with this tonight. Gonna get this guy cooking, getting him done. Getting close, at least. So if you guys are joining me tonight and you're wondering why am I not working on the Charming Chevron's quilt, uh, I did not finish it. Yet, uh, we're just having a, a new thing tonight. Uh, we're calling it Finish It Friday. Uh, so Finish It Friday. Uh, usually I want to have this the first Friday of the month. 
um, but I forgot <laughs> last week, so we're doing it this this week. But the first Friday of every month is just going to be kind of our time to stop our big project that we're working on and uh, take a day to just um, take a day to work on a project that has been sitting around and we don't have done yet. So we're working on our one of our unfinished projects. And uh, tonight it's my hedgehog quilt. I'm working on the border here, straight line stitching in the border. So I will, uh, once we're done here tonight, we're going to wrap up once I finish this row. But I'll, I'll show you it again. I'll show you the, the hedgehog guy that I'm working on here. I just have one more, one more row to, to sew like this. And then a binding and a sleeve so I can hang it up on the wall. And then I got to buy a dowel or something. I don't know, to hang it up. So that is it. Then I'll be done. So hopefully it's done before the next Finish It Friday, but I don't know. That March, the first Friday in March is going to come up real quick here. So maybe we'll be, maybe we'll be right where I left off here then, but hopefully, hopefully I have it a little further along. All right, let's get rid of this guy. Ooh, nice, Sharon. Treated yourself to a Janome 15,000. 15, you can hardly wait to do your first quilt with it. That sounds amazing. Yeah, I would love a long arm, but I really have no reason for it other than to play around, and I have zero room, so that's you know, negates that whole possibility altogether. But, you know, I like to think that I could clear out a room and, <laughs> and put it there. All right, I'm aiming for the spot that we have done yet and I don't want it to bunch, so I'm just gonna ease it a little bit. All right, so I'm gonna do that thing again where I just slow, I um, not slow down, I'm, I'm going to make the stitch length like almost zero. Oop, a little bit more, I gotta move a little bit. Just a really short stitch length right at the end here. Um, I just read that that's a different way for you to, to stop um, instead of just back tacking or having to, to you know, the, if you're in a quilt show, then you would uh, stitch in all the ends, but I'm not going to do that. Uh, so what I read was just to do teeny, teeny, tiny stitches, like a quarter inch worth of teeny, tiny stitches, um, and that's, good, that's enough. So I'm going to... You know, we got one more minute. I think I might just start the next row. So it is, um, so it's just started. So I, I know where I'm at. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna start the next row and sew to maybe about right here. So I'm in the ditch here. So one little bit yet. Yeah, I need a she shed for the long arm. I've already taken over every other part of this house. So I don't know if that would fly. <laughs> First we need to build a she shed and then I need to buy a giant long arm quilting machine I, I'm thinking I'm thinking that's not likely <laughs> all right I'm gonna lift the needle up and we're gonna get to that corner spot here I'm so close to done oops I hit you guys sorry um right about there I'd say let's start with a few stitches again those really short stitches. I need my little grippets to help me out here again, though. All right. Straighten out here a bit. All right, some of those tiny stitches just to get us going. All right, and then back to my normal stitch length here. Doing a twelfth of an inch. Oh, it's working so much more smoothly tonight. I'm I'm really happy about that. So I'm just gonna get in here a little bit. I have paint on the jeans here. <laughs> Some of these jeans. They have a story all of all themselves. All right, so I'm gonna stop right there. Uh, I think I might still be able to show you a little bit of the quilt, even with it with it in the machine here. But we're going to stop there tonight. Yay! Finish it Friday! All right, I'm going to flip you guys around, and we'll take a look at this again. 
Hello! Okay, I love I love Finish It Friday. <laughs> so, all right, I am just going to show you this guy again. He's on the machine, so I can't go far with it, but it's the, uh, oh yeah, you guys won't be able to see it at all, really, but um, it's the little hedgy. There's his little face, <laughs> his little nose, but it's all, it's all hand tied. So I got these little hand ties in, and uh, then the quilting in the back. You can see it, uh, see it here. We did the, I'm going to try to stop moving around here in a sec. There, so here are the little ties, and we did both of these rows tonight. So we are just about done. All right, and then this is all just like really big stitches here. So awesome, I am so happy with this. It's moving right along, and thanks again for all your tips. We worked that little tension dial on the top. Uh, that was fun, never done that before. <laughs> So that was neat. I'll, you know, I feel like I, I've read the manual and I feel like that just brushed by me. I don't know. Uh, but, you know, I know a whole lot more about the machine now from use. So maybe now reading over it, my eyes won't glaze right over it because I'll, I'll know what it does now maybe. Uh, but yeah, I'll have to look into it again. But that worked super well. Uh, what we did was um, there was too much pressure on the, the presser foot. Like it was squishing my fabric too much and my fabric was bunching up. So we released that a little bit. I didn't know you could do that. Um, and now it's working great. Great. It's just gliding underneath the the walking foot, and it's um, I'm not having any of the problems I was over the weekend. So that's swell. <laughs> I'm, I'm super happy I learned that tonight. Uh, so thanks for all your your guys' help with that for sure. Um, I'm gonna maybe I'll work on this a little bit over the weekend. I don't know. Um, otherwise, maybe it'll pop up in our next Finish It Friday, which will be uh, the first Friday of March. And uh, on Monday, we will pick up on the Charming Chevrons quilt again by Krista Watson of Krista Quilts. So back on our big project, and I'm, I'm stoked for that one too. Now, now that I've been quilting this, I want to just get free motion quilting on that guy. So let's get her done. So awesome, guys. Uh, have a fabulous weekend, and I will see you on Monday. Oh, yes, Gretchen, I should, I should uh, call in about the belt on my machine too. Yeah, you're right, before we get to the free motion quilting. All right, guys, awesome. See you on Monday, uh, 8.30 p.m. Central Time then. So adios. Thank <laughs> you.